Welcome to the Living Unconventionally podcast. I'm Brittany Felix, and every Monday I'll be speaking with someone that realized a traditional life with a soul-sucking 9-to-5 job just wasn't for them. They had the courage to go against what society told them they should want, and now they chase their passions all over the world. We'll discuss their unconventional journey and their exciting and sometimes terrifying travels. Every Wednesday we'll continue that conversation by talking about just how they can afford to travel so often and live a life of freedom most people only ever dream of. Every Friday, I'll answer your questions and offer advice and encouragement to help you start living unconventionally. If you allow yourself to be inspired by my amazing guest, one day I may just be featuring you in your world travels. Welcome to episode 56 of the Living Unconventionally podcast. Today, I'm continuing my conversation with Mari Connor. Mari is a Facebook marketing expert and self proclaimed laptoppreneur. She runs her six figure marketing agency from her laptop as she travels the globe. Now, on Monday's episode, we talked about how growing up in a military family inspired her love of travel and taught her from a very young age that she is capable of doing things on her own, which then translated into starting her own business. Now, if you haven't checked out Monday's episode yet, you're going to kind of come in the middle of a story because Mari was actually the very first person that I ever interviewed for this podcast. So I didn't quite have my format down, didn't exactly really know what I was doing. Not that I claim to know what I'm doing now, but I've got a little bit of a better idea. So part one had to end in kind of a, a weird spot. She just finished telling an awesome story about a time when she thought she was stranded in a former communist country. She was waiting on a family friend to meet her at the train station when she got there. He was not anywhere around. She had a breakdown at this train station. And so that's where part two is going to pick up at the very end of that story, because then it transitions into how an experience like that and coming out of that helped her find the courage to know that she can start her own business. So bear with me for it being just slightly awkward, but Mari is awesome you're going to love her. And she's got some great inspiring stories for you today, especially about her total lack of knowledge and confidence that she could ever start a business of her own. She had no clue what she was doing. And like I said, now runs a six figure business and has started a second one on the side. So let's not waste any more time and dive right in with Mari. You know, I, I've never been so happy to see an Eastern European man my entire <laughs> life and everything ended up being wonderful for the entire rest of the trip. I now appreciate that moment. I think that moment has actually helped me in a lot of ways throughout life and in work and stuff. When I've been in situations where I feel all alone, that one situation taught me I can get through it. Right. If you never experience anything negative, how do you know that you can handle what life's inevitably going to throw at you? Right. Right especially when you go into business for yourself, because you only have yourself to rely on, especially in the beginning until you can kind of build up a team and network with other people. Obviously, it it sounds like that those experience helped you realize that you could work for yourself and start your own business. Is that right? I I do think that there's a parallel. The one thing I, I love about travel is that sometimes the moment of uncertainty and fear followed by pulling something from inside of you and getting through it and then knowing that you can access that again in life. And absolutely, when I talk to any of my friends or family about starting a business, I will say, if you want to go on the most intense spiritual journey of your entire life, start a business. Because the scorecard, like you said, is totally you. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) There's nowhere to like, you know, hide behind a cubicle if you don't feel like working on any given day. There's no way to hide your numbers. There's no way to um, deflect, you know, either positive or negative what's going on. Everything is reflective of you. It will shine a light on what your weaknesses are. Now, initially, it's very traumatic. (laughs) Mm -hmm. For a moment, you kind of go, wow, I, I really am not great at bookkeeping. I'm great at systems for when I'm working for someone else. I'm not great at them for myself. So yeah, I would say that, and I never, I've never actually made this connection, but I think that you're right. A lot of the experiences that I've had, particularly traveling alone, um, have helped me in that sort of lonely at the top. I am the only person running the business and everything is ultimately reflective on me. 
If my team isn't doing their job, there's some reflection on me, whether it's, you know, who I hired or how I trained them or, you know, what standards and procedures I may have had them go through or not. Mm -hmm. Everything comes back to who you are and what you're made up of and what your strengths and weaknesses are. And um, it can be very daunting to look at, but on the other side, just being on, on the train tracks, you know, in Liptovsky Mikulash, you have moments of like overjoy because I get to see these things and the average, you know, the masses and, and people going kind of just checking into a job don't get to see, you know, right. You know, your life kind of almost in inventory and in numbers in front of them. Right. Well, and I think also anytime you have to struggle and really work hard for something and either fail at some point or almost fail, it seems like it makes the success that much sweeter. There's a saying out there about failing fast because it's it's inevitable. So, you know, kind of get it out of the way because there are lessons to be learned in the failure. Just that anyone that has succeeded has failed. And many times they will acknowledge or, th- you know, be grateful for that failure for getting them even further to where they are. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just like with your experience, I think if you hadn't had that breakdown and that kind of moment of terror and, oh, God, what's going to happen next? maybe it wouldn't have been quite such a a sweet moment when he finally appeared. So, you know, you could you could appreciate it more when the the person that you were relying on does show up. Totally, totally. So when did you first decide to go into business for yourself? I believe it was in February. In January of 2012, I put the notice in at the job that I mentioned earlier that I was Mm -hmm. the, the assistant director at an alcohol and drug treatment center. And I walked into my boss's office and I just said, you know, I'm very, very sad, but I am giving you my two weeks notice. A lot of people, you know, because everybody needs to be put in a box, you know, a lot of people came up and said, so what are you doing next? And I said, at the time I had actually, I had saved, I had a lot of miles saved up and I had booked a trip to the Cayman Islands round trip for some sort of a conference that I wanted to attend. And then almost immediately would fly back to Phoenix because that's the way the miles were. And then take off like, you know, I I would land in Phoenix that night and then take off the next morning for Europe and travel around Europe. And all I told people was that all all I know is that I'm traveling. I'm just taking time to figure out what the next step is. I think that I knew in the back of my mind, I wanted to do something for myself, but I had never started my own business and I didn't know what that would look like. So I took about three months to myself. I I had a a very tiny bit of savings and I had uh, limits on my credit cards. And, you know, I'm a big person that I believe that there's, you know, sort of good debt and bad debt. Um, Not that I would ever encourage people to go into debt for travel. Right. But I've always, you know, been able to do something like that. And then I usually come back pretty quickly because I'm like refreshed and I'm able to pay it off. So a combination of savings and credit cards took those trips. But then actually even at the end of those trips sort of didn't. And it's very unlike me. I'm I'm a workhorse. I didn't feel like I was ready to go back to work. Mm-hmm. And because I kind of kept putting it off and wasn't sure what I was going to do, I thought my savings is dwindling down. I'm, I'm collecting debt. I need to apply for a job. And I sent a message to a longtime mentor, and he had been a mentor of mine for about you know eight or 10 years at that point. I sent him my resume to review, and I said, would you mind reviewing this? Because I think I'm probably going to go find a job. He sent me a message back that said, we need to meet for breakfast tomorrow morning. He said, 9.30 a.m. at this coffee shop in Tempe, Arizona. And I was like, that's a weird response. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> And so uh, I showed up that next morning, very weary of what type of a meeting I was walking into. And once we got our drinks, we sat down. He said, how are you doing? And I said, not well. He said, "Uh, what's going on? And I said, I I don't know what I want to do with my life. But in the meantime, I don't want to waste any time. And I I need money coming in. And just all these thoughts that go through your head, you know, Mm -hmm. insurance. and, And he said, you know, just take a step back. And he said, you know, I've watched you over the last eight to 10 years grow and build. You go to work for a company, you end up being not the director, but you're always like the assistant to the director. (laughs) You end up doubling, tripling or quadrupling their sales. He said, when I got that email to you from you last night, my heart sank because he said, I couldn't watch you do that again. But here's the catch. He said, you have to jump out the window, but I can't push you out the window. And he said, jumping out the window looks like starting your own business. And I said, well, what do I do? And he said, you'll figure it out. And I said, well, how do I even start a business? And he said, (laughs) you go, you're going to leave here. You are going to drive down the street to the FedEx Kinko's. You are going to get a box of business cards made. He's like, you have a laptop, right? I was like, yes, I have a laptop. (laughs) He said, do you have a phone? I said, yes, I have a phone. He said, uh, a website can come in time. But he said, basically, you have all you need right now. And I said, what about money and bank accounts and, (laughs) you know, incorporating a company? 
And he was like, you're going to go to Chase and you're going to tell them like, I need a business bank account. I am starting my company and you're going to give them a name of a company and (laughs) they're going to tell you what to do. They will tell you what steps you need to take. They'll point to city hall. And just at the end of that meeting, I was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm doing. (laughs) And he, and and I remember him saying, okay, good. And like running out the, you know, okay, good. We're done running out the door. (laughs) And I, in this coffee shop surrounded by hipsters that were all on laptops <laughs> thinking, I guess I go to, what did he say? He said to go down the street, you know, it, it, like he basically put it into baby steps and that, right. was the, that was the beginning of Marigold Marketing Group. So that was your Marigold came out of that moment then? Yes. And how long ago was that? That would have been around April, uh, April or May, 2012. Wow. Okay. So now from that moment there in the coffee shop, how long was it until you got to the point where you thought, okay, this might actually work. I might actually be able to to do this and turn this into something real. I don't think I thought it was going to work for a while. I think he convinced me it was going to work. Um, and so I was still on a lot of faith. That would have been the end of April, I think, beginning of May 2012. And I had filed for an LLC in Phoenix, Arizona by like May of 2012. I kind of hit the ground running and then I started calling up previously. I had worked at a radio station in Phoenix, Arizona, and I had clients that I I had always done well by. And so I called a lot of them up and I said, I'm starting a new company. I'm going to be doing, you know, advertising on social media. Again, I had this history of, I had done copywriting for a a radio station and a national network. And I also did radio sales. And it was like, where, where would those skills best translate into a company? And it was like, Facebook is up and coming, social media is like happening right now. I know how to take a company's story and whittle it down to a 15 second ad. <laughs> Where else could that be useful? And I was like, social media. So I just decided that I was going to force myself to learn a, a little bit of how to do social media because I personally have never been extraordinarily interested in it. I still don't understand people that sort of like vomit their lives online. Yes. Although, yeah. you know, I'm going to have to, you know, watch myself because, you know, I'm sure eventually I'll end up doing that. And that's what we'll all be doing. So I didn't really have a, a full understanding or grasp of it. But I, I knew from a, uh, my business sense is always pretty on point, And I knew that Facebook was going to be was going to be something that I could leverage into a business. And so basically, I did I started doing social media posting and maintenance. And when you're first starting a business, you find yourself saying yes to anything that anyone asks you when they say, right. so do you do PR? Do you do, <laughs> you know, postcards? Do you do? And I was like, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> like I can make the most beautiful postcard. I had trouble with pricing in the beginning, was not pricing high enough at all, like to almost, you know, cover my costs, learned mm-hmm. a hard lesson about that. My mentor, the same guy would say, do not charge hourly, you know, only charge by the project. And I remember that seeming very confusing at first because I was like, well, I mean, mm-hmm. what if it was even like $100 an hour? Like, that's a ton of money. Right. You know? um, but I now understand that he, he has an expression that or he has a story about a man walking into a bar and seeing Picasso sitting at the bar and going up to Picasso and saying, hey, you know, do you mind uh, making a drawing on this little bar napkin or whatever? And Picasso says, sure. And he kind of does this, you know, phenomenal drawing on this itty bitty bar napkin, hands it back towards the guy. The guy goes to take it as if he could just have it. And Picasso says, no, 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 no. And the guy says, what, you know, how, how much would that cost me? And he said, you know, $50,000 or whatever, whatever the amount is, you know, something right. crazy. And the guy says, but that only took you two minutes to draw. And he says, ah, but it took me like 50 years and two minutes. Right. Because the experience that you bring to anything, you know, provides the value. And that was sort of a, a hard lesson that I had to learn. But once I started getting, once I started finding out what clients needed and came up with a monthly retainer, that's when the business actually started growing at a, at a reasonable rate. Which, and I did look around at the Marigold Marketing Group website. I do notice that you offer individual coaching at an hourly rate. So how does that, how does that factor in with the, you know, the monthly retainers and, and all of that? Based on what I do on projects, someone once called the, and I, you know, I don't know how far we can go on the cursing. Maybe you can beep it out. I said, what, you know, what people do ask about hourly, what do I do about hourly, whatever she was like, just put a fuck you rate up there, which means like, uh, in the sense of, you know, if you're willing to pay it, I'm willing to stop what I'm doing. Um, right. but, but if you're not willing to pay this rate, then I'm not willing to stop what I'm doing. And so right now, <laughs> my rate is 297, which actually is probably going to be going up to uh, 497. Because I'm getting busy enough with, you know, with my retainer clients that uh, stopping the flow of whatever project I'm into to jump on the phone does kind of cause a break in work. So we'll just call that the FU rate. (laughs) That works for me. And it makes me so much more appreciative that you took the time to do this. (laughs) 
And I saw on your website that, you know, Jamie Tardy had given a, a testimonial. Jamie Tardy, of eventual millionaire for yeah. anybody who doesn't know. And I know that you've mentioned Natalie Sisson. And how have you been able to make these kind of big name connections? And, and how has that really, you know, helped you with your business? So I started, first of all, uh, business coaching uh, was definitely deciding to get a business coach was a, you know, formidable uh, moment in my business. From May of 2012, when I started my business until I went to my first event with Nick Unsworth in November of 2013 in San Diego, I was kind of like I mentioned with the the hourly rates and the projects and the just flailing and quoting, you know, random prices that I thought were appropriate, really, you know, barely scraping by every month. When I started my business, I did wait tables on the side to ensure that I had a little bit of a base income coming in. And I still wasn't making all that much money waiting tables because I was really overdoing it. So I was I was barely making ends meet, you know, every month. And I just thought, I see entrepreneurs out there all the time who are talking about six figures and seven figures. And I would check out their information and their websites. And there were a lot of areas where I felt like I knew more. So I took a Facebook ads course because I did feel like I needed to know more than what I knew from Nick Unsworth. And he ended up having an event that was kind of connected to one of his courses that you purchased, went to the event and learned a lot of a lot of tricks, uh, you know, a, a lot of tricks in business, like finding an anchor client, um, because typically those people are going to be connected to other ideal clients. So find a client that, you know, a you really want to that you really respect that you really want to mm-hmm. work with. And that also, you know, has the funds potentially to pay you. However, you do contact them and you offer your services for free, knowing that that you then kind of have access to their Rolodex if you impress them. By November of 2013, I was getting by barely, but I, I definitely was still looking at, you know, what do I really want in life as far as lifestyle design? I want to travel. I just started paying attention online to, well, who's got who's got a business that they're running and traveling? And it was like, you know, oh, Natalie Sisson, the suitcase entrepreneur. I believe I contacted her directly. I may have gone to her site. And you sign up for, um, she had a coaching program that was like 497 or something for every three months, but you had to apply and you had to jump on the phone with her to make sure that it was the right match and uh, ended up joining her coaching program. And in doing that there one day in one of her groups, someone, someone said, Oh, I'm having trouble with Facebook ads. You know, could someone help me either? I jumped right into the conversation or someone, you know, tagged me or something. And I ended up sending either like a direct message to her just saying, Hey, I, you know, I saw that you weren't sure quite how to answer this do you need help with your Facebook ads? And can we jump on a call? And that's what we did. We, we got on a call and I was able to say, look, can I, you know, do your Facebook advertising for your next launch? Like on me, um, I just want to show you what I can do. And it ended up being a success. That's fantastic. And I especially love that story. Natalie is kind of, I mean, obviously with the theme of this, she's definitely one of my inspirations. And I listen to her podcast constantly and I'm reading her book currently. And so I love that you can make those connections that that work on both levels, you know, because she understands your love of of travel and she also understands the business side of it as well. Right. It was a perfect, perfect marriage. And yeah, there's no one that that knows sort of more and that really, truly like lives her belief and her just emphasis on freedom and using sort of Mm -hmm. um, business and travel to achieve that. I have nothing but the most respect for what she what she puts out into the world. Right. Yeah, I think it's great the way she goes about it, too. It's very real. And it seems like you might be heading in that direction as well with your your laptop preneur site. Is that correct? Or Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm kind of following my heart. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot in common when it comes to the running the business and uh, the love of travel. She gets around quite a bit more than I do. I, I tend to, you know, kind of go out and then come back to Phoenix. And mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna end up organizing my life into more of like, quarters of traveling like every three months here and there because I it is really tough to kind of like be up and moving every single you know month or even less than yeah absolutely well and it's good to every now and then kind of hit the reset button come back to your comfort zone and and recharge and then you can go out and really fully experience everything again so and you have those moments again of being like being on your phone or on your computer dreaming about where the next trip is right right so now with Laptoppreneur, what is your goal with that? I have a lot of friends and family who have been just badgering me about documenting um, what's going on on my trips and um, what I'm up to and what I've learned. And I'm getting a lot more of the question about how do you do this? Mm-hmm. So um, I'm hoping that the Laptoppreneur website, that's sort of the mission is really to answer the questions that people have been asking me. And then, uh, then I've got a little bit of me that isn't quite sure. Like I'm, I'm totally open to see where it evolves. And I think it'll have a lot to do with whatever audience that it attracts. 
and right. what they both what that what they want to know more about and what what I want to share. Are you going to treat that kind of as another business or is it going to be more for you on a personal level? Uh, it'll definitely start on a personal level. I think it's almost unavoidable at this point based on how many people are asking me how they can do what I do mm -hmm. that I want. I can't say that I won't look at figuring out a way to monetize. But for now, I really would enjoy and I look forward to just sort of documenting my passions and sharing that with, you know, whoever desires to jump on and to read it. It's really, it's a, you know, and maybe I'll kind of document what it's like to start a blog, you know, from right. kind of from scratch, because I've been so busy working and taking, taking care of my clients, which I absolutely adore. And I love, and I have some of the most interesting clients ever because I can run a global business, but yeah, to just sort of uh, look more inside and document that journey and let people know, you know, what trials and tribulations and triumphs come out of trying to start your own online brand and online assets. So I do have just two more questions for you. One would be, what is the absolute very first step for somebody who wants to start a, you know, a lifestyle business or a, a location independent business? When I have people that ask me that question about how do you do this, I basically tell them they've already taken the first step. Just by asking me means that something in them has opened up to be courageous enough to even ask. And I know that it's almost like maybe that's like a pre-qualifying, but um, I, I absolutely, that's the, that's the moment that I get the most excited for anyone that I'm talking to that is wanting to sort of do what I do. The second part is just figuring out what your, what your passions are and start thinking about the lifestyle design. I think um, I mentioned that when I decided to leave that job where I was the executive director, that I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to travel more. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely crystal clear on that. And then as time went on, I discovered, you know, more like I, you know, I don't want to work so many hours and I don't want to work at night. That's a part of my agreements that I only work eight to five Monday through Friday because I need, I need several hours to kind of come down at the end of a day, which I didn't always have. And in, in, you know, most American jobs, you, you are still answering emails and stuff like all hours of the night. So um, getting a clear vision. So I think probably journaling, talking to friends and um, connecting with people like Natalie Sisson, uh, myself, um, and, and shooting us questions and just always be curious and inquisitive and you'll get the answers that you need for every step of the journey. I mean, you're very obviously a success story. I mean, you you went from breaking down almost in a coffee shop, not knowing what the next step was to having a six figure business. But I'm sure somewhere along the way were some really, really difficult times. What advice would you give to somebody who is starting off and experiencing those inevitable moments where everything just kind of seems like it's just hopeless? How do you continue and press forward to reach you know, your level of success? I have learned not to be alone for too long. Running a business from your, from your laptop or even sort of being like a, a, you know, a solo whatever is not super healthy ultimately as a human. And I have to actually sort of keep in mind that it's imperative that I keep lunch dates with friends or mm -hmm. um, even meeting clients out for a meal every now and then. Or like tonight, I'm going to see a former client who is like singing at her restaurant. And like right at this moment, I'm thinking I've had a long day. You know, I don't know that I want to drive out to Scottsdale, but I know that I need that for my spirit um, because mm -hmm. it's that kind of food that's going to feed me when I when I am having a really low day. So not being alone for too long. And then in the last year or so, I, I've discovered that attending conferences with other like-minded entrepreneurs, because it's, it's actually really hard to figure out who, in, who exactly in Phoenix, Arizona is in the same place mentally that I am, as far as feeling like they can travel the world and do these things. And I find that if I go to a conference in you know, San Diego or Las Vegas or New York City, I tend to find people in those rooms that I relate to a lot more and who relate to my lifestyle. And I now try to do those about once a month. I mean, a lot of them, some of them are free. Some of them do carry a cost. I've gotten to a point now where I can usually justify the cost because I can, I can usually find someone that I might be able to provide services for at those events. But even right. if I didn't, there are many times when it's absolutely worth every nickel to go to those events, get, you know, sort of get motivated, get filled with a little bit of fire so that you're good for another month or two. So, you know, between business coaching, friends and family, not spending too much time alone. And it, it's really not even just me as a solopreneur. I find that we're all communicating. And I was just on the phone with another entrepreneur friend. And we were talking about how people are more disconnected today mm -hmm. because typing a comment is not the same as a verbal exchange, which is why podcasts are so great. You can hear right. the intonation. You can hear the emotion. You can hear the inflection. 
And I think that that's just like critically important for us as humans to sit across from a table with an old friend. And it doesn't even matter what they're saying. Um, just looking at the expression of like love and respect and everything they have for you in their eyes mixed with the intonation, the inflections that they make as they're talking to you and the banter that you can have and the really huge belly laughs that we all need to get through life. And that wraps up my interview with Mari Connor, Facebook marketing expert and self-claimed laptop preneur. If you want to check out either of Mari's websites, so for Marigold Marketing Group or for Laptoppreneur, I will have links to both of those in the show notes on my website, and you can find those at livinguncoventionally.com forward slash episode 056. And again, those are the numbers 056. Now, if you did listen to Monday's episode, you might have caught the announcement that the Living Unconventionally Facebook group has officially crossed 100 members. Actually, I think we're up to like 110 or so now, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a celebration for that in the form of a contest. I'm going to announce that a little bit later this week, exactly what I'm going to be doing, but I'm only going to make that announcement in the Facebook group, and it's only open to those that are members. So if you have not joined yet, be sure that you do so. The link is also in the show notes for this episode, or you can just search for Living Unconventionally on Facebook. And in addition to the awesome contest that's coming up, you'll also get to connect with an amazing, supportive community of like-minded people who will just totally understand your desire to not be confined by cubicle walls, to roam free, to live your own life, to find the freedom that you crave. They're all going to get that. You won't have to ever answer the question, well, how are you going to make money? Or, well, where are you going to live? Or, well, what are you going to do about your children? You can't just pull them out of school. I mean, those are all questions that you won't get in this group because the community members hate those questions as well. So feel free to just get in there, form relationships, interact with the people, and you're going to have such a great time. And then on Friday, be sure that you come back for this week's solo episode. I'm going to provide an update on how our inaugural trip out in our new travel trailer went. We did take it out last weekend. We spent three nights in it, so I will give you all the details on that. And I'm also going to talk about how I am finding different ways to cope with some of the negative things that have been going on lately, and not just with the delays in the trip. Uh, We were originally supposed to leave a few weeks ago now, and we are still here, and there's not exactly a very quick end in sight. And on top of that, I've kind of had some personal stuff that's happened, so I'll go into all that on Friday and let you know how I'm coping with that so that maybe whenever you run into the inevitable obstacles that I promise you are going to happen in your own freedom journey, you might have some ideas on how to just push past it because, and I have to believe this, it's so incredibly worth it. So I will see you back here on Friday and I will hopefully see you in the Facebook group before then.